Hey everyone, welcome to another episode. And today we have a 22 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon in the shop that we're gonna be doing some upgrades to. This is a 2022, you don't wanna miss this one. My, is everybody in the world blind? Please Lord, give me a sign, a sign. All right, honestly, this is actually my wife's Gladiator um, that she got this past fall. It only has like 4,000 miles on it. Um, it's Gladiator Rubicon. She had it built, had everything done that she wanted to have done. I picked up a few goodies for it um, for her for Christmas. And now we're going to go ahead and install the stuff. This is not a hardcore wheeling machine, so we're not going that route. This is kind of a road queen, a daily driver. Um, but we wanted to give it a little bit better of a look, a little more capabilities and function. Let me show what we got. All right, as you'll see, most of this stuff is already unboxed. And the reason being is because... We do powder coat in here and I took some of the spacers and already went ahead and powder coated them. They came in a basic black. We went ahead and primed them up and got them red to match some of the accents in the red on this Jeep, like in the front itself. Uh, wheel spacer, same thing. I wanted to find something that was close in color to the factory wheel. So we got a nice, like uh, it's called the Cadillac gray. It's a metallic inch and a half wheel spacers going on it. And I believe the front lift is a inch and a half front spacer in a three quarter inch rear because the, the uh, Jeep Gladiators have quite a bit of rake to them already. This has real nice Fox shocks on it. We're gonna be keeping those. So we're gonna bring the front up about three quarters of an inch higher than the rear, which will help level out the ride height of the, the vehicle itself. And the wheel spacer is just gonna give it that little bit more aggressive of a look. Um, as you can see from the side, you can kind of get a view of the rake here and the fact that it doesn't have any like aggressive stance. So we're gonna get those wheels tucked out a little bit on this thing, and that will help out tremendously. Um, and here's a shot of the red, a few little red accents it has in it. So you won't see a lot of it in there uh, on top of that spring, but it's red, it'll be red. Um, I also got her some Rough Country Black Series uh, pod lights to go up by the window that she had on her last Jeep. We also powder coated those brackets, uh, the Cadillac Gray as well, um, just to kind of keep that theme going. That's the Black Series pod lights. You can find a bracket right here. So again, we went gray. These get mounted up on the hood. So pretty cool with that. So I will get this started. Oh yeah, almost forgot. A tactic um, tri-fold tunnel cover for the back for this thing as well to keep cargo and everything protected. So that's gonna be cool as well. Simple install from our friends over at Quadratech. So let's get it inside and get started. All right guys, just want to give you a little bit better of a shot of what's included in the lift kit. Like I said, it's an inch and a half spacer in the front that we powder coated red, they did not come red. Um, some extensions for the uh, bump stops and just a three quarter inch spacer for the rear. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy install on that. Wheel spacer, same thing, straightforward. Take the wheel off, put the spacer on. We're gonna to torque it on there um, and put those on. And then we're gonna do the two inch um, black series pod lights from Rough Country. And I believe this being the Rubicon, it has all the aux switches inside. I haven't messed with these yet. I believe that they're all pigtailed under the hood. Um, my buddy over at Made Off-Road Enterprise does a lot of stuff with Jeeps. He said it should all be there under the hood. I'm gonna double check with the owner's manual. Um, and like I said, there's the brackets for those and the tunnel cover. So we'll get her up in the air in our new shop, right? We're finally in here working, so it feels good. <laughs> All right, I haven't even had this Jeep up on a lift yet. Um, so we'll probably rotate the tires while I have it up. She's almost due for an oil change too, but I feel like the dealer will do that, at least for the first couple. We're gonna start with going ahead and getting the all four tires off from this thing. And then I'm thinking we'll just attack the suspension lift first and get that buttoned up and that part of it done. And then the wheel spaces and put the wheels back on. We can lower it down and then work on our lights. So we'll start with the wheels. Bye. All right, starting out in the front, basically what you gotta do, it's a spacer that sits on top of the coil in here. So in order to get the coil out and get our spacer in, we've gotta disconnect the sway bar in link. Um, they do talk about disconnecting the uh, bracket for the brake line itself so you don't overextend it because you're gonna lower this down, as well as our Fox shock lower mounting bolt. It's pretty sweet, these Rubicons, they're pretty set up. Um, and then you can lower this side down and again, we'll do the other side. Uh, but let me get the stuff unbolted and then I'll kind of show you. Hold up. 
big news, big announcement. I just got word that my wife, Jen, and my son, Caleb, may be coming down to help me work on her Jeep. So that'll be pretty cool and probably a little bit funny because she typically doesn't come down here and work with me. There could even be some arguments, but pretty cool. All right, guys. We got the sway bar and links unbolted. Obviously, things are very easy because it's new. It's kind of nice to be able to do that. Uh, we got our rear, our front brake line bracket disconnected. And in order to get the lower bolt of your shock out, lower the vehicle back down if you're on a lift here or support it on the frame. And then you're going to jack up with a jack or something similar to kind of compress that coil a little bit to take the strain because that's essentially what's what's holding your axle from flexing down allowing you to take this coil out so we took some of that strain off and we were able to pull that bolt right out now when we lower this down try to do it slow and hold the camera you see that coil and everything kind of extending out extending out it'll just it'll keep going until the point where it's just loose like you can see it's pretty loose now um i can keep it going down keep an eye on your lines make sure nothing's getting tight and she's loose now so i can pop that out of there and uh we can get our spacer in all right the coil springs out on the floor you're going to reuse this bottom uh support right here you will reuse that so you can leave that once you take the coil out you have this rubber isolator that's up on the top here whoops that comes off you're going to reuse that now the spacer goes up in there like so so you notice there's two little tabs on that what happens is you're going to reuse this isolator see the little pitons i don't know what else to call them sticking out they fit right in like that so the assembly goes up into the Ugh, I'm try to do this Clearly can't with one hand i don't know but anyway let me finish pushing it like that and then the coil spring goes back in and at the same time you're going to fish in your uh bump stop extension as well and you're going to put that bolt in there at the same time so I'm gonna work my magic. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world dying? All right, as you saw in the time lapse, we just simply fished everything back, back up in there. The spring is oriented right back where it was factory wise. We're using the bottom brace, we're using the upper isolator. It's just simply adding that spacer in there, which actually matches quite well. Um, and I even did. <laughs> I even did the bolt um, and then there's a nut that goes on the bottom of that right there so you can kind of get a ratchet in there hold the top and then tighten the bottom down uh, like I said I jacked up the uh, axle assembly slid the uh, bolt in here for the lower shock then lower the jack that holds the assembly on then I'm gonna go ahead and put the sway bar end link back on after we do the other side as well as the brake line bracket and that nut and that's it, pretty much all there is to it to the front lift on this um, the Jeep is pretty straightforward pretty easy to do and fun. All right, we got everything all buttoned back up We got our sway bar links reconnected. We have our lower shock bolt and a brake line bolt Those are the only three three things that we took off They did mention the track bar bolts, but we didn't have to touch them. So we did not touch them Spacers in there with the factory isolator. We extended our bump stop So the bolt goes in through the top here and there's a nut in the bottom this side's easy to get however the passenger side because of all this mess and this mess it's a little tighter to get to with the track bar and everything in your way but it is doable and you can do it with hand tools again don't need a lift but it is easier so that wraps the front up we're going to move to the back all right so what we've done is disconnected the uh, rear sway bar link uh lower the lift put the jack under the axle to support so we're able to get our lower shock bolt out and now we're going to lower the actual jack down to get the spring out on this side so i can show you that isolator and again keep an eye on your um uh all your cables and springs and everything else all right forgot to mention one thing the uh rear track bar uh you do have to disconnect it so it'll give you that play to get the spring out so now you can go ahead and pop that spring out of there if i can't do holding the camera but let me pop it out and i'll show you the isolator but i have an announcement to make the wife the flipping wife jen has made it here to work on her jeep so she's gonna dig in and get her hands dirty as well my hat cricket. What are you doing? All right, babe. How's the pizza? Cold. Good, good. And you see you brought your dogs. That's wonderful. You're and welcome. she's about to get uh, dirty. All right, we got the spring out of the Jeep. This is the rear spring now. This is the rubber isolator on the top. And I believe I might have misspoke and said that it replaces this. I was wrong. It definitely does not replace this. I don't know what I was thinking. 
Um, it actually goes on the bottom. So here it is, this is the three quarter inch spacer that goes on the bottom. So it just sits on that there and the spring will sit on that, okay? You are gonna keep and reuse the uh, thin isolator that goes on the top. So we're gonna go ahead and pop that spring back up in there with the spacer, which honestly, we could have probably done without taking the spring out now that I know it goes on the bottom, but good lesson learned. All right, we got the uh, spacer in the the, uh, the rear on the driver's side. So goes on the bottom. Technically, I, on the other side, I'll show you, you only have to take the spring out. Let me do it, I'll do a better job on the other side. Um, again, just you'll have to let, loosen the, uh, and take out the lower shock bolt. Still this sway bar link. We'll leave our track bar disconnected to allow the flex of the axle on the other side. And then we'll just kind of hold the coil up and slide that spacer in, be even easier. Douche. Not being a douche. Ready? Put your hand on that and start pulling. You're not loose enough, babe. I know. Keep pulling. Oh, for God's sake. See? See how that works? Nice job. Thanks. A plus for you. Woohoo! All right, so we're on the other side now. Like I said, the lower shock bolt is off. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pry, leaving the spring in, Pry down on the axle a little bit because it's close. It's almost can get in there like this and slide that th uh, this lower spacer in there. Again, just a three quarter inch spacer. So easier leaving the spring in there now that I'm talking about the right part. <laughs> All right, good. Direction. Yep, so we've got the lower shock bolt in. The wife is putting these sway bars. Again, hit it again. Good. Sway bar links back in, the track bar bracket is back in. We're gonna throw the nut on the lower shock bolt and then it's on the wheel spacers. All right guys, so we got the front inch and a half spacers in, the rear three quarter inch spacers in. We're reutilizing the factory Fox shocks. Again, this is the Rubicon. It has the uh, better suspension on it from the factory so we're gonna keep those shocks. There's no reason to change those. All we're doing is changing the ride height. One thing I do wanna mention, is you obviously want to get an alignment after you finish your install of the lift because one thing you may notice right away you may not because this is a real small lift um the steering wheel might be off a little bit um you can correct that here by adjusting this nut um but either way you're going to want an alignment done so you're definitely going to want to take it before too long and get it professionally aligned in alignment shop so now we're going to put the wheel spacers on and to do that it basically just goes over the hub right here, again, we just powder coated these um, to kind of match what she's running with for a wheel. They literally go on like so, if I can get them in the right holes, like that. Hub centric, that's funny. Yes. And we're gonna put the nuts on here. These nuts that go on here with a dab of Loctite, we're gonna talk, torque them on. Then we're gonna put our wheels on and torque those on. And then we'll have that on. And again, I mean, by you're gonna do it, you. So you're gonna go ahead and take these nuts off. We're gonna put them on here with a little bit of Loctite. All right, I just wanna mention a couple things on your wheel spacers. Again, you're extending your axles out. These not extreme, it's an inch and a half, but either way, it's a possibility to get some premature wear on your suspension components, your bearings and everything else. So that's a risk that people take for the aggressive stance or whatever they want. Um, you do want to make sure that, and this is a new vehicle, so it's pretty straightforward as far as cleaning everything goes. This surface must be cleaned up, okay? Nice and clean. Once that's clean, you're going to put a dab of Loctite, a dab of Loctite, not too much. Then your wheel spacer goes on. Use the nuts that came with it, and you're going to thread the nuts on and torque them to your wheel torque. And I believe all the Jeeps in 2022, anyway, are about 130 foot-pounds. You're going to torque those on just like you would a wheel. So we're going to go ahead and pop these on, then get them all torqued. Then the wheels go on. Like again, we just put a uh, dab of Loctite on each one. And we're just gonna run it down with the, uh, the battery ratchet. So you're gonna snug them, and then we're gonna throw up and do 130 foot pounds. That's it, man, just a dab on each one. You wanna be able to take these off again someday. So keep that in mind. <laughs> so she's putting the spacers on now, which is good to have her in the shop and working. All right, so I'm in here and uh, Shit. Push down. Shut up. One steady motion. Well, my shoulder is still sore. I can't put too much weight on it. She's torquing the wheels. <laughs> Try it so I can make fun of you. There you go. 130 pounds. Clicky do. Your factory lugs may protrude, depending on the thickness of your spacer, a little bit beyond the spacer. If that's the case, and this one does a little bit, it is not much. You want to make sure that your wheel 
like this wheel has a recess and allows for that so your your factory wheel will still sit flush so just wanted to mention that don't forget to check that oh and this would be a great time to subscribe to our channel help us grow you'll get more of flipping wife on here to help out hit the subscribe button hit the like button let's finish this jeep look at her go there you go yeah you use your, your knees to lift it up see back saver and she's getting it and he's got to rotate Where it the hell? yep just like that oh okay you got it there you go now push it on We're using your legs too perfect we got the wheels on and torqued to the factory 130 foot pounds and one thing i do want to mention is with wheel spaces especially or any suspension lift after a certain amount of miles say a couple hundred miles you want to go ahead and recheck your torque especially on these wheel spacers um don't let it go too long double check your torque but the wife's lowering to the ground let's see the new stance all right there it is we got an inch and a half higher in the front now we got an inch and a half more aggressive stance on the wheels it's actually perfect real nice they actually just just they're flush with the outer fender so it gives it that aggressive look and as far as front to back it's hard to tell in here but uh it's a lot leveler than it was that's for sure you can definitely tell the front has come up yeah so that's a good look you like it yeah it's very noticeable in the front awesome and i do like the aggressive look sweet all right now we're going to go on to the uh pod lights these are the rough country black series they're going to mount up here all right, just want to show you what we got for the lights. This is the two inch black series from Rough Country. I had good luck with their products. Comes with a full plug and play harness. Um, so you don't have to hack the harness up. You do have to probably tuck some wiring away. Um, it does give some nice detailed directions as far as that goes. But again, this being the Rubicon, it has factory auxiliary switches in it. And that's ooh, what I mean by that. See those aux switches right there? Okay, she got that when she had this built. So these are, I believe, all pre-wired under the hood. So, and they're fused with a relay. So I think it's a matter of literally connecting these to our harness and then our harness to whatever that pigtail is. Well, I will look that up. But these are the light themselves. Let me take the cover off. Maybe, I don't like the cover. Yeah, I just them away. I never had them on it. See how it gives the black lighting in the back? That's pretty cool. Pretty yeah. mean looking. All right, how these brackets, I believe I got these brackets separate from the lights because I like the style of the bracket as I drop it on her Jeep. <laughs> nice job. Um, anyway, they go on right here and here. So it uses the windshield bolt and the actual bolt here, and it comes with a spacer. Um, so that'll go just like that. And then your pod light obviously goes into that hole. So we're going to get these brackets on now and then onto the wiring. All right, since I've seem to have misplaced the spacer for the bracket when i powder coated them so that's up at the other shop which i'll go look i just wanted to say the auxiliary switches that are inside the vehicle are all pre-wired i believe there's a 15 amp circuit a 15 amp circuit and two 40 amp circuits so we're going to tie <coughs> excuse me we're going to tie into one of these with the uh wiring for the two pod lights so literally it's already wired for a switch so that will be very straightforward as far as the install goes for uh this jeep that spacer goes under this bolt head and it actually comes with a new bolt and the other one goes behind the windshield bolt and you're going to reuse that one and then you mount the stud through here through here before you mount the pod light onto that um just makes it easier with less chance of scratching at the same time we're going to undo these two bolts pull this back so we can route our wire for our lights through here down to the other side and over to that pre-wired auxiliary switch so i'm going to get these bolted in and then we're going to go on to the wiring all right guys as you can see i pulled off this side panel here and that tucks down underneath those two mounting screws right there boom and you got the two side screws there and it just slides in you take that out um you go ahead and install your bracket like i said you put the stud on so now when you put the light on light on you just have the nut there it just slides in behind the window screw and then you put that spacer underneath and you use their new screw they give you now what i'm also going to do and that's why i took this cover off is to tuck the wire between the two panels and have it come out into here someplace so therefore when we go ahead and route the wiring it's clean and it's underneath here and not just like strewn wherever all right guys kind of show you where it is now the the, the pod light is sitting on the bracket just to kind of give you a better view of it and this is the the uh light plug and play harness itself now keep in mind we're not using that entire harness but the way it's going to route through is i've taken the other side off as well it's going to route through the front right here 
You don't want to be on the back side because that's all the uh, mechanical mechanism for the wipers. So you want to stay away from that and on the front side. Now, with that being said, out of this whole harness, and they have a nice plug and play harness. I do like their harnesses. We literally don't need any of this except for the two light connections because we have a relay power and everything on this Jeep. If you did not have all that set up like we have, you would wire it like so. And the directions are very straightforward. Um, they also offer, this is a um, uh, switch that is hardwired. They also offer a wireless remote switch. So everything is under your hood and, and that makes it simple as well. And I will be one, doing one of those on freight train because I did get the wireless switch for that one. We have not installed that yet, but we will. So I'm gonna go ahead and route our wiring a little bit that we're gonna use from this harness and then we get them powered up. All right guys, we got our lights mounted. They're not tightened down yet as far as alignment purposes go. We got our wires routed and we tucked them up underneath this foam weather stripping. And again, I cut off the rest of the harness right here because the two lights are gonna splice together and the hots are gonna go to, remember, our Jeep's pre-wired with aux switches. So this pink and uh, orange wire is a 15 amp um, circuit that's pre-wired with the relay and the whole deal and they're gonna tie into that, um, that wire itself, which is aux three switch. And then we're gonna ground it right here. And that's honestly, that's it for wiring on this thing. Super clean, super easy. And then we just got a program, which I'm not sure how to do, um, inside the Jeep to tell it what's on aux three and how to turn it on and everything. But let me uh, finish getting these things wired up and we'll uh, get them fired up. All right, we got our uh, connections made. So the two lights are spliced together and tied into our pink and orange wire, which is our aux three switch. And one thing I want to mention, we always use heat shrink splices um, and then we heat shrink all our connectors after as well as wrap them with some uh, nice electrical fabric tape and clean things all up. So we're going to get our, our uh, ground grounded and our lights groomed out and zip tied out of the way so you don't see them and they look nice and clean. Then we can fire them up. All right, there we go. You get a shot of the two inch rough country led black series pod lights lit up and they are freaking bright like i said we just have them wired to aux switch number three um but that is going to be a game changer at night we've had them on our last jeep we we're super super happy with them the level of them the look is awesome all right here is our tunnel cover again this is a soft but a tri-fold tunnel cover from uh tactic uh that quadratech our, our friends over there that we got from them. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing unboxed, get the instructions out, and then get it on the Jeep. All right, first glance, we take the cover off. This thing comes in its own like care package, like bag, like storage bag. And I didn't expect to see that. So I guess we get to slide it out of here and get our hardware and stuff out of there. It's all like pre-assembled, so let me get it out of there. All right, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, if you have the utility track set up, this Jeep does not have it. I think Nissan, Toyota, and some Jeeps apparently use it. This would actually just slide it in that rack and make it that much even easier. Uh, but we don't have that, so you go with the standard installation, which is set it on the vehicle, unfold the trifold, center it, and then fold it back up, apparently. <laughs> I think. We got two flashlights on this now. All right, how's that? So this just comes out of its little, it's just like kind of clipped into a parking spot. That just swings down like so, and then clamps on the edge of the bed rail, and then you just tighten that thumb wheel down, I guess. And that's it, it's just foam across the front here. I did notice a little tiny gap here that we, depending on how tight we can get this, uh, we may have to fill that so we don't get any water leaking. So let me go ahead and finish putting this on. So it's just four clips. You just tighten these down. So basically what you'd have to do to open the tunnel cover is lift this latch like that and then pull it out and then you can lift the whole cover up. So that's kind of how it goes. You put it in, latch it down, boom. Seems decent. What I'm seeing though, if you see, can you go shine a light in the front of that? Um, we got a gap, an air gap on the front of the bed up there. So you'll see it in a second, you're gonna shine a light through it. Your light's not on it. There you go. Yeah, it is. There it is. So we have a little gap on the sides, both sides. So we're gonna add some foam, something, I'm not sure what. So we may have to call Quadratech and ask those folks. 
All right, got my beautiful wife holding the flashlight. So it does come with these cotter pin clips. So the latch lever, when you push it down, you can kind of lock it in. Nah, not a super fan of this. I feel like it's not gonna hold up in the cold weather, but I guess we'll see. Um, so, okay, you can come out of there. We'll shut this, I'll kind of show you what it looks like overall. Gives it a nice clean look. Um, like I said, we'll have to talk to Quadratech and see what they say about the front foam strip here and go from there. But there's the tunnel cover, super easy install and it does give it a nice clean look. All right guys, so what do we do today? We did the Rough Country LED pod lights. We did the inch and a half wheel spacers. We did the inch and a half lift in the front, three quarter inch in the rear, as well as the tunnel cover on the back of the Gladiator, the 2022 Gladiator. Let's get it outside and see how it looks after. I like it in here, so let's see what outside. All right, here it be in all its glory outside. And the first thing you'll notice is the stance. We got an inch and a half spaced out on our wheels now, and that definitely gives it the a more aggressive stance. Um, obviously, we got the uh, two inch LED pod lights on there as well. And if we take a step back, you can see we have lost a lot of that rake, okay? So we brought the front up an inch and a half and the rear three quarter to maintain a little bit of a rake, which I wanted because we could have just done an inch and a half in the front and nothing in the rear and it would have been dead level. But I wanted a little rake because we do use it. It is a truck, so I did want a little bit. It definitely gives it a nice aggressive look. It's just enough lift. It's a daily driver. It's not going off road, any type hardcore, nothing. Um, so this is this is nice. Um, we got it with the tunnel cover as well and the pod lights. Pretty happy with it. I think the uh, exhaust system is going to be next as well as an intake. All right, guys, that brings us to the end of the episode where we took this 2022 Jeep Gladiator and brought it up a little notch in the cool factor. So already a very cool uh, vehicle being the Rubicon by adding the two inch pod lights, the inch and a half wheel spacers, inch and a half lift kit, as well as a tunnel cover. So if you like today's episode, so please give us a subscribe and hit that like button. Thanks again, guys. Scott from Flipping Customized. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me 